Chapter 1.3, Video 2 The Existence Uniqueness Principle Consider an initial value problem given this form y prime equals fxy and we have the extra initial value information y equals b when x equals a Now you may ask, do we know that a solution y to this problem even exists? And if it does exist, is there only one solution? Now this is what the existence uniqueness principle addresses. Now it turns out we can usually give an answer to this question. So the first part of the existence uniqueness principle says that if f is continuous on some rectangle R containing AB then there is a solution for x between a c1 and a c2 for some C1 and C2 that contains A. Now what this says is that if you can check that F is continuous sorry I wrote, I wrote the wrong F here. Let me fix that. If F is continuous on some rectangle R around this initial value then we know that the solution exists. But we don't really know yet if there is only one solution. This is where the second point comes in. The second point is if in addition the partial derivative of f with respect to y is also continuous in that R, then we have that Y is unique on some C1, XC2, C1, A, C2. In other words, to check if there is a solution for the differential equation around an initial value, we have to check the continuity of the function f and the continuity of its partial derivative. So we have a initial value a, b, which you know about. We have a little rectangle here. And if both f and f prime and f d f d y are continuous on this rectangle, we know that we have existence and uniqueness for some interval c1 c2. Now c1 and c2 can be at the corners of the rectangle but they don't always have to be so we could have existence and uniqueness on some interval that is within inside the rectangle R. Also it is possible for an f 
to satisfy the first of these principles and not the second, in which case we know that the solution exists. It could be many of them. It could be two, three, four, or maybe even an infinite number. And regardless, it might be possible that outside of this little interval between C1 and C2, that our solution stops existing or stops becoming unique. So this existence uniqueness principle only applies for a small little area around the initial condition.